Good morning, everyone. Today, we will be going to perform a demo teaching among grade 3 pupils about the characteristics of living and non-living things. But before anything else, I would like to introduce myself first. I am Mr. Jobert Facun together with Miss Mary Eleonore de Leon, Miss Marnell Ponce, and of course, Miss Ginella Manuel. And we are your demonstrators in Science 3. And here are our objectives. At the end of the discussion, the grade 3 pupils should be able to understand the characteristics of living and non-living things, appreciate the significance of living and non-living things to the existence of nature or environment, and lastly, create an illustration by giving examples about the difference between living and non-living things. Okay, so we hope that everybody will pay attention to our demo teaching so that you may learn and you can utilize those learnings in your future teaching career. So please, everybody, sit back, relax, and let us all watch and enjoy the demo teaching that we prepared. Class, am I audible? Do you hear me? Do you see me on your screens? All right. Before we begin, kindly open your cameras and please do unmute your microphone as we ask for the grace of our Lord. Okay. Children, do you still remember our opening prayer? Good job. Then what is the title of the song? Yes, Lila? All right. I want everybody to sing Jesus Love Me together with the music video. Are you ready? Okay, so I will now be playing our prayer song. Let us all bow our heads. <laughs> Okay, everyone say amen. Amazing children, always remember that Jesus loves us. And as the Bible says in John 13, 34, we must love one another in the same way he loves us. This is how everyone will recognize that we are all his disciplines. When they, when they see the love we have for each other. Okay? Good job. 
Good morning, my grade 3 pupil. Wow, I can see a lot of happy faces today. And everybody is clean and well-groomed. Good job. Okay, so how is your day? All right. Very good to hear that your day is turning out well. Now, please. Everybody, keep your cameras open and unmute yourselves because we are going to sing our song every morning, okay? All right, so I will be now playing the good morning song and all of you should sing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One, two, one, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, and how are you? Early in the morning, I say good morning. Hello, and how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Hello, and how are you? Early in the morning. Good morning to your classmates. Ask them if they have a great and amazing morning like you. So, is everybody okay, children? All right. I'm glad to know that. Then, we must do the good job clap at the count of three. Let us do it together. One, two, and three. G-O-O-D-J-O-B. G-O-O-D-J-O-B. Good job. Good job. G O O D J O B G O O D J O B good job good job good job Now before we proceed to our discussion let me first check your attendance Children as we used to do every morning upon calling your name everyone used to say present but let us make it in a creative way Once I call your name you must tell us anything that you can see in your surrounding instead of saying present it it is up to you if it is an animal object plant transportation or a human again anything children is that clear all right so let us start with miss abalos okay a cat next mr laxon Okay, a jeepney. Next, Miss Pagatpatan. Great, a baby. Next, Miss Tanyana. Excellent, a mango tree. Lastly, Mr. Zamora. Very good, a pencil. All right, very good. Upon 
checking your attendance. My grade three pupils are all present today. Now, did I give you an assignment? Okay, so I hope that everybody had already passed their assignment to the assignment tab that I created last night. Am I right? Great, now let's do the good job clap again. At the count of three, let us do it together. One, two, three, go. G O O D J O B G O O D J O B good job good job G O O D J O B G O O D J O B good job good job good job Now before we continue let us recall our guidelines when we have our lesson Number 1 be prepared and do our activities Number 2 be positive and be happy. Number three, be productive. Number four, be respectful of your classmates and teacher. Number five, be participative. Number six, unmute your microphone and open your camera if needed. And lastly, raise your hand button if you want to say something. Do you understand class? Okay. Nice. So class, it's science time again. I have a song that I prepared last night. And the title of the song is Science Time. So you have to open your cameras and please do unmute your microphone as we sing the song. However, I will sing it first, and for the second time, let us sing it together, okay? Okay, so allow me to sing it first. In one, two, three. Oh, it's science time after all. Oh, it's science time after all. Oh, it's science time after all. Oh, Oh, it's science time after all. Okay, everybody sings with me. Oh, it's science time after all. 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 Okay, very good. Let's start then. It is a good day to brain up. So, children, do you still remember our lesson yesterday? Anyone? Yes, Mr. Mariano. All right. Yesterday, we discussed about the proper ways of caring plants. So, for me to know if you really listened to our lesson yesterday, we will be going to have a game. Are you excited? All right, so our game is entitled Pick a Number. So you must listen carefully for the mechanics of the game. So as you can see on your screen, there are, how many children are there? Okay, there are five children and three of them are girls and of course, two of them are boys. So behind of each child, it has a picture of such activities in carrying a plant or maybe destroying a plant. And of course, each picture has questions. Now, I will be calling your names randomly, okay? Is that okay, class? All right. It seems that no one feels nervous today. And I am glad about that. All right. Again, you just have to pick a number, okay? All right. So let's start with Miss Lagonero. Miss Lagonero, pick a number. Okay, number three. Okay, so let's see the girl in number three. Okay, Miss Lagonero, this is your picture. So you have to make an observation with this picture. And later on, I will be asking you some questions, okay? 
Now, my question from this picture is, what do you think is the girl doing with the plant? Correct, Miss Lagonero. The girl is removing weeds around the plant. Now, is this a good thing to do to plants, Miss Lagonero? Kindly explain. Good job. This is a good thing to do to plants because the weeds compete with the plants in terms of the nutrients of the soil. Okay, next. Mr. Mariano, Mr. Mariano, you have to pick a number. All right, number one. So let's see the girl in number one. Okay, so again, Mr. Mariano, you have to make an observation. And later on, I will be asking you questions. Okay, now, my question from this picture is, what do you think is the girl doing with the plant correct mr mariano the girl is breaking the branch of a plant for no reason now is that a good thing to do with the plants kindly explain mr mariano good job it is not a good thing to do to plants it is not good for the plants to break its branches especially with no reason However, sometimes plants are trimmed for decoration purposes or for the plants to grow well. Okay, next. Yes, Miss Guerrero. Miss Guerrero, you have to pick a number. All right, number five. Okay, so let's see the girl in number five. Okay. Again, Miss. Guerrero, you have to make an observation and later on, I will be asking you questions, okay? All right. Now, my question from this picture is, what do you think are the two boys doing with the plant, Miss Guerrero? Correct. The two boys are placing fertilizer around the plant. Now, is this a good thing to do to plants? Kindly explain, Miss Guerrero. Good job. This is a good thing to do because it helps the plant to grow well. The fertilizer provides the nutrients needed by plants. Okay. Next. Miss Peg. Miss Peg, you have to pick a number. All right, number two. Okay, so let's see the boy in number two. Okay, Miss Peig, this is your picture. Again, you have to make an observation and later on, I will be asking you questions, okay? All right, now my question from this picture is, what do you think are the two boys doing with the plant, Miss Peig? Correct. The two boys are placing a fence around the plant. Now, is this a good thing to do to plants, Miss Peig? Kindly explain. Good job. This is a good thing to do to plants because it serves as protection, especially if the plant is still small. And lastly, we have the boy in number four. So this is for Miss Erica Rufo. Yes, Miss Rufo. So this is your picture. Okay, so again, you have to make an observation. If, and after that, I will be asking you some questions, Miss Rufo. Now. The question is, what do you think is the boy doing with the plant, Miss Rufo? Correct. The boy is stepping on the plants for no reason. Now, is this a good thing to do to plants, Miss Rufo? 
Good job! This will never be a good habit. The plant might be dyed if it is being trampled, okay? All right. So, that would be the end of our recitation with regards to the topic yesterday, okay? All right, class. I am so happy because you were able to answer all of my questions, okay? So, it only means that you have learned from yesterday's lesson, okay? So, I would like to congratulate all the uh, students who have uh, recited in our today's recitation. So, congratulations, children. Now, look at the poem in your screen. So, I will read the poem first, and after that, let us read it together, okay? All right, so the poem is entitled, Things Around Us, written by Jennifer M. Rojo. Okay, allow me to read it first. Things Around Us. Look up, look up. What are above? Sun, moon, stars, and clouds. Look down, look down. What have you found? Rocks, soil, creatures, small and round. Look around, look around. What do you see? Plants and animals. Objects made for you and me. Again, let us all read the poem. Things around us. Look up, look up. What are above? Sun, moon, stars and clouds. Look down, look down. What have you found? Rocks, soil, creatures, small and round. Look around, look around. What do you see? Plants and animals. Objects made for you and me. So that is the poem of Things Around Us, written by Jennifer M. Rojo. Now, I have some questions, class. What do you think is the poem all about? Anyone? Yes, Miss Lagunero. Good job. The poem is all about the things around us. Now, what are the things mentioned in the poem? Let's enumerate five. Give me one. Yes, Mr. De La Cruz. All right. The animals. What else? Yes, Miss Rufo. All right, Asan. What else? Yes, Miss Guerrero. All right, Amun. What else? Yes, Miss Peg. All right, the plants. And lastly, yes, Mr. Mariano. Great, the clouds. Now, based on the poem, what did you observe? Anyone? Yes, Mr. Torres. Exactly. So, there are things mentioned in the poem. We could see those things in our surroundings. Now, based on that, what do you think is our lesson for today? Anyone? Yes, Trixie. Uh-huh. Things from the environment. It is possible, but what do we call to the things that we see in our environment? They are classified into two. Anyone? Yes, Miss Rufo. Very good. These are living and non-living things. So today, we will be discussing about living and non-living things and, of course, its characteristics so that you would know how to identify if a certain thing is considered as living or non-living. Okay? Good job! Now, 
let us have a collaborative activity. Yesterday, I already gave your groupings. I divided the class into five groups, right? Okay. So as you can see in your screen, there is a table and it consists of 10 rows and six columns. In the first part of the column, you would see the objects while on the remaining part of the columns, there are questions. So all you need to do is to answer the following questions based on the provided pictures with yes or no. Understood? Okay, so I will be giving you five minutes to finish the task since it is a teamwork activity. Then if you are done, attach your file to the assignment tab that I created. Is that clear? All right, but before that, kindly recall our standards in performing group activity. Anyone? Yes, Miss Guerrero. Very good. So we have an acronym of groups for the standards in performing collaborative activity. So G stands for get along. R stands for respect others. O stands for on task. U stands for use any form to communicate. And P stands for participate. All right. So you may now start working as a group. Okay, class, it is already time. I hope you already uploaded your file. Am I right? Good job. So let us now begin with the discussion. Let us start with the characteristics of living things. And of course, later on, we will also discuss the characteristics of non-living things. However, let us first define what is living things. So anyone? Yes, Miss Rufo. All right. So when we say living things, these are things that are alive. People, animals, and plants are living things. And living things need a few things to stay alive. These essential things are air, water, and food. Both animals and plants need water. And of course, humans. Understood? All right. So for better understanding, let us now discuss each of the characteristics of living things. So first on the list, living things grow. To consider this, imagine a baby. So the baby grows into an adult, okay? So in the same way, a young plant will grow into an adult plant. Okay? Is that clear? All right. Next, living things reproduce. Reproduction is the process of producing another organism of the same kind. Imagine the cows. They have calves. And people. They have babies. And lastly, the adult chicken lays egg. So, they were reproducing. That is why we consider that living things Reproduce. Understood. Good job. Next, living things move by itself. For instances, birds fly, fish swim, kangaroos jump, and horses run. However, even plants, they move by themselves. 
have you encounter a mimosa plant or a makahiya plant in Tagalog? All right. If you touch the leaves of the mimosa plant, the leaves immediately close. And definitely, the plant creates movement by itself. Understood? Good job. Next, living things breathe. For instances, all of us, we are breathing. Then, the animals, they also breathe. Even plants, they also breathe from their leaves through the process of food making called photosynthesis. Understood, class? Great! And lastly, living things need food. So all of us, the animals, and of course, plants need food and also water to stay alive. Is that clear, class? All right, very good. So now, do you have questions with regards to the characteristics of living things? All right, if that is the case, let us now proceed to the characteristics of non-living things. However, let us first define what are non-living things. Anyone? Yes, Miss Peig. Very good. When we say non-living things, these are things that are not alive. They do not need air, food, or water. Is that clear? All right. So for better understanding, let us now discuss the characteristics of non-living things. So the characteristics of non-living things is opposite to the characteristics of living things. So first, non-living things do not grow. Okay? So they won't be changed in terms of physical appearance. They would still the same even years will pass, okay? And non-living things do not reproduce. They will not be able to reproduce because non-living things don't have life. Next, non-living things do not move by itself, okay? And non-living things do not breathe. And lastly, non-living things do not need food. Okay? All right. So, any questions with regards to the non-living things and its characteristics? Is it clear? All right. Again? All living things possess the following characteristics. Move, breathe, or respire, need food or energy, grow or develop, and reproduce. Like people and animals, plants also move, such as the movement of the leaves towards sunlight to capture energy and movement of the roots towards the soil to absorb water and minerals. Again, respiration is the process of breathing of all living things. Plants breathe on their leaves through the process of food making called photosynthesis. Living organisms reproduce. Again, when we say reproduction, it is the process of producing another organism of the same kind. Now, Take a look on your screen. So this was your activity earlier. So let us all answer this activity. Again, I will be calling your names in random order. So just be ready and answer the questions once your name is being called. Is that clear? Okay, so let's start with Miss Abalos. Okay, so for the object number one, at three, the question is, does it grow? So all you need to do is to answer the following questions with yes or no. 
Again, does it grow? Okay, yes. Does it reproduce? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Again, next. Does it move by itself? Yes. Now, does it breathe? Yes. Does it need food? Yes. Very good, Miss Abalos. Next. Mr. De La Cruz. A cloud. Does it grow? No. Does it reproduce? Okay, no. Does it move by itself? Okay, no. Does it breathe? No. Does it need food? No. Okay, next. Miss Pagatpatan. A rock or a stone. Does it grow? No. Does it reproduce? No. Does it move by itself? No. Does it breathe? No. Does it need food? No. How about a bird? Yes, Miss Pagio. Does it grow? Yes. Does it reproduce? Yes. Does it move by itself? Yes. Does it breathe? Yes. Does it need food? Yes. How about a boy? Yes, Miss Tagama. Does it grow? Yes. Does it reproduce? Okay, yes. Does it move by itself? Yes. Does it breathe? Yes. Does it need food? All right, yes. Next, a table. Anyone? Yes, Miss Lagunero. Now, does it grow? Okay, no. Does it reproduce? All right, no. Does it move by itself? No. Does it breathe? No. Does it need food? Okay, no. Good job, Miss Lagunero. Next, Mr. Mariano. A butterfly. Does it grow? Yes. Does it reproduce? Okay, yes. Does it move by itself? Okay, yes. Does it breathe? Okay, yes. Does it need food? All right, yes. Good job, Mr. Mariano. Next, an umbrella. Yes, Miss Guerrero. Does it grow? No. Does it reproduce? No. Does it move by itself? Okay, no. Does it breathe? Okay, no. Does it need food? All right, no. Good job, Miss Guerrero. And lastly, a girl. Does it grow? Next, an umbrella. Yes, Miss Guerrero. Does it grow? No. Does it reproduce? Okay, no. Does it move by itself? All right, no. Does it breathe? Okay, no. Does it need food? All right, no. Good job, Miss Guerrero. And lastly, a girl. Yes, Miss Peig. Does it grow? All right, yes. Does it reproduce? Okay, yes. Does it move by itself? Great, yes. Does it breathe? Okay, yes. 
How about, how about, does it need food? All right, yes. Good job, Miss Peg. All right, very good class, because you were able to understand the characteristics of living and non-living things. So now, kindly do the good job clap again at the count of three. Let us do it together, okay? One, two, three, go. G-O-O-D, G-O-B, G-O-O-D, G-O-B. Good job, good job. G-O-O-D, G-O-B, G-O-O-D, G-O-B. Good job, good job, good job. So now, class, for you to have more practice in identifying objects into living or non-living things, last night, I prepared an activity. So it's your activity time. So as you can see on your screen, there is a table. It consists of 11 rows and 6 columns. Now, take a look at on the first column. So all you need to do is to draw 10 objects that you could see in the school. It could be an animal, things, plants, or humans. Is that clear? And for the remaining column, this is where the possible characteristics of living and non-living things located, okay? So, you have to answer this also, okay? So, you have to write yes if the particular objects describe the characteristic of living things and no if it is not. Is that clear? All right, so I will be only giving you 10 minutes to accomplish this activity. And once you are done with this, kindly send it to the assignment tab that I created. Okay? All right, so you may now start. Okay, class, it's already time. So I hope that you are all done. Am I right? Okay, very good. Okay, class. So, do you have any questions or clarifications? All right. If that is the case, I will be the one to ask questions. Is that clear? Okay. So, again, what is living things? Yes, Miss Rufo. Good job. Living things are things that are alive. How about non-living things? Yes, Miss De Jesus. All right. These are things that are not alive. Now, kindly give me an example of living things. Yes, Miss Collis. Good job. An acacia tree. What else? Yes, Miss Agbanawag. Good job. A snake. What else? Yes, Miss Habun. Good job. An elephant. How about non living things? Yes, Miss Cadena. Good job. A basket. What else? Yes, Miss Ambrosio. Good job. A cell phone. What else? Yes, Miss Rigor. Good job. A shoes. Good job, class. Since you already understand the characteristics of living and non living things. However, it is not enough that you only have familiarized with them. We must also inculcate to our mind that these living and non living things play a pivotal role in the existence of the nature or environment where we are living in. For instance, a plant, which is an example of living things. These plants in turn can feed humans and animals. It can also help the environment to produce fresh air so that humans and animals can breathe normally and to avoid air pollution that may damage our nature. On the other hand, non-living things make up the physical environment. That means sunlight, water, 
soil, temperature, and rainfall help to form the environment. That is why we should give appreciation to all the things in our surroundings. As humans, we must take care of the things that we have and things that we see because each of them has significant role to the existence of the environment. Is that clear, class? All right, good job. So, can we do the good job club again? At the count of three, let us do it together, okay? One, two, three, go. G-O-O-D, G-O-B, G-O-O-D, G-O-B. Good job, good job. G-O-O-D, G-O-B, G-O-O-D, G-O-B. Good job, good job, good job. All right, class. So that would be the end of our discussion. All right, class. For me to find out if you really understand the lesson, you will be going to take your quiz. Okay? So, later on, I will set your quiz on the assignment top and you have 20 minutes to answer. Is that clear? Good job! In your quiz, there are two parts. The part one, which is multiple choice type of test. And for the second part, we have alternate choice type of test. Now, take a look at on your screen. So, this is how your quiz looks like for the, for the first part of your quiz, okay? So, for the part one and for the direction, all you need to do is to choose and select the letter of the correct answer. Is that clear? All right. So, for the second part of your quiz, this is how it looks like. For the direction, you must read this statement carefully. Draw a smiley face if the statement is true and draw sad face if the statement is false. Is that clear? Okay, so are you ready to take your quiz? Very good. Therefore, I will be now posting the quiz on the assignment tab. All right, so the quiz is already posted. You may now start to answer. Okay, class. It's already time. Are you all done? Now, for your assignment, you will be going to create an illustration of your living room. Then, you must group the following objects, animals, plants, or humans based on your drawing into living and non-living things. Understood. And then you will be going to take a picture of your work and upload it through assignment top. This will be submitted until tomorrow at exactly 7 o'clock in the morning. Is that clear? Okay, very good. Okay, class, before I end this meeting, I would like to acknowledge the students who participated well throughout the discussion. So allow me to present to you the active students of the day. So first on the list, congratulations, Ms. Laila Joy E. Lagonero. Next, congratulations, Mr. Emmanuel Dominic V. Mariano. Next, congratulations to Miss Kyle Trixie A. Guerrero. Next, congratulations, Miss Ivy Joy F. Peig. And lastly, congratulations to Miss Erica C. Rufo. And for those students who are not listed their names, 
as an active student of the day. Do not worry, children, because you still have days for you to be included to the list of the active students of the day. So, that would be the end of our discussion. So, we hope that you've learned a lot from us. Thank you for today, children. Goodbye and God bless. See you tomorrow. And don't forget to put happy ending on your daily life. Bye-bye!